Hi guys, well in the spotlight today we've got the ASRock Z390 Phantom Gaming 7. Now this Intel chipset here was launched at the tail end of last year, so it might be a bit of a strange thing to be looking at such a product today, but both this and another ASRock Z390 were launched just a few months ago, and so we thought it would be an interesting thing to see what these two new boards have to offer. So while the X is the flagship within the Phantom Gaming series, the 7 here can be regarded as a mid-range option. ASRock has given this board some of their extras, which include the 2.5 gig LAN connection and a 10 phase power design, which promises to supply rock solid performance. Now this board here arrives with a price tag of 189 in the UK, 195 in the US. And so with those prices, this board here is kind of creeping into high-end territory. And so from it we expect a generous selection of features, consistent performance, and something that is able to take the 9900K to a decent frequency. And so with our intro now out of the way, let's do a quick unboxing on this and check out all of those features. Firstly then, this is the box that our board arrives in, as you can see, nicely designed. Over on the back, we have the fundamental features, along with the board and obviously the tech spec down at the bottom, so nothing out of the ordinary there, as what you expect. Inside the box, we have the board in this anti-static bag and in the tray. And in terms of the bundled accessories, there actually isn't a lot of stuff here, as you can see. First of all, we have the driver CD. You can get all those online anyway, but uh, there is a disc there for that. We have the user manual, and then the software guide, so that is specifically for the software. Some SATA cables, I think there is, uh, yeah, there's two in each pack, so you get four of those. Some screws for your M.2, and then a fixed SLI bridge. Okay, so here is seven. We can definitely see the gaming aesthetic that are coming through in the design of this board. If you've seen other models in this series, you'll recognize the styling. The board itself is predominantly gray, with black and red being used on the PCB and the heat sinks. And as we can expect, this board conforms to the ATX form factor, so it is gonna fit inside most mid towers. ASRock has included RGB lighting on this board, and it is obviously going to be compatible there with Polychrome Sync, which is ASRock's RGB technology. And on top of that, we have three headers, two are 12 volt RGB LED, and the gray one is addressable RGB. And so that allows you to sync up other devices. Now this is an Intel Z390 board, and as you would expect, we are dealing with Socket 1151. And this is primarily then designed for Intel's ninth generation of processors, such as the i9-9900K. However, if you do have a previous 8th gen CPU, then that will also work too. So this model here delivers a 10 phase design which is digital. You have two large heat sinks to cover this area and those are both interconnected. Along with that VRM configuration we also get super alloy components such as 60 amp chokes, 50 amp DRMOS, Nichicon 12K black caps and a high density glass fabric PCB. Behind the top heatsink we have an 8 plus 4 pin CPU power arrangement which should be ample for decent overclocking. Now for the fan headers, we get a total of five across this board, two of them being the designated for CPU fan or the water pump. Next we have the memory which allows for dual channel DDR4, up to 128 gig, up to 4300 MHz frequency with XMP2 support. Those dims have gold contact as well. Near to the memory we also get the onboard power and reset buttons, and so if you do have the board on a test bench just like us, that is a handy feature to have. For the front panel, ASRock has included two USB 3.2 Gen 1 headers and another USB 3.2 Gen 1 for the Type C at the front. Storage is something that ASRock has not held back on with up to 8 SATA 3 ports for SATA based drives. And there are two M.2 slots which are both PCI Express Gen 3 X4. Those M.2s have full heatsink coverage, just need to remove those screws to attach the drive. Behind the SATA ports we have a large heatsink which sits over the Z390 chipset and just below the lower M.2 we have an LED debug panel which although not essential is a handy tool to have there for diagnostics. Now in the PCI Express section we have three PCI Express 3.0 X16s which are steel reinforced and another three PCI Express 3.0 X1s and the modes for each of those X16s are 16, 8 and 4. Below the top PCI Express you can see that we've got the M.2 slot there which is designed for Wi-Fi that uses a key E connection but strangely enough we don't get a Wi-Fi card or antennas included this is something you're gonna have to source yourself 
Shifting over to the audio, which is right next to that PCI Express, as with all Z390s, our board here uses the Realtek ALC1220 codec, and it is accompanied by some other features and components, such as the Nichicon Fine Gold series caps, the NE5532 headset amp, separated left and right channels, gold-plated audio jacks on the back panel, and all of that kit has the isolated circuitry to prevent any interference. And so what we typically expect on an ASRock board, and the audio quality there is great. And then finally we have the rear I.O. section of 7, and it's great to see that ASRock include a pre-attached rear I.O. shield, which is one less thing to have to think about when you build inside the case. And so in terms of the included ports we get, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, PS2 keyboard mouse combo port, DisplayPort 1.2, HDMI 2.0, another two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports with the 2.5 gig LAN port, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, one is Type-A and the other is Type-C. Another LAN port, that is Gigabit. Two holes there for the antennas if you want to add that in. And then the 7.1 audio jacks. And so a good selection of ports there to make use of. Okay, so that is the Phantom Gaming 7. As is customary for the Z39 to we get all those usual features. The uh, plenty of SATA ports, twin M.2s, Wi-Fi support, good mixture there of USB 3.2 Gen 1 and Gen 2. Now on the subject of USB 3.2, most brands are now adopting the new naming system. Uh, some of you may think that it's something new, but it isn't. USB 3.1 has just been rebranded to 3.2, and that is spreading out universal across the industry as a whole. So this board here looks great. I love what they've done with the design of this ASRock. You know, they've separated themselves from the competition. The gray PCB is both eye-catching and something of a novelty. Now the M.2 storage is quite awkward on this board as the top slot requires the chipset heatsink to be detached. And not only is this annoying to have to do as it requires screws to be removed from the underside of the board, but for inexperienced users it adds in that element of risk because if that heatsink isn't properly reattached, we could end up with that chipset overheating. And so ASRock should really do something to you know, avoid that approach in the future. Now in terms of the performance of this board, it's in line really with other rival Z390s, which is a great thing. It offers solid performance in a range of different tests, and we will of course be doing a website review for this board here, which will feature all of those benchmarks for you to check out. So the link for that will be on the screen and in the description. Another great thing is that we were able to hit five gig overclock for our 9900K with around 1.32 volts. It wasn't as straightforward as other boards though, so some of those more advanced settings needed to be adjusted, but that is a good result nonetheless. The only other thing that I would criticize about this board is the pricing, which sees it kind of up there with the higher end offerings into that territory, and yet it lacks some features like the Wi-Fi card out of the box. At 195 US, we really feel that ASRock should really lower the price on this model here. So that's it for me today, guys. We'll also be checking out the new Steel Legend very soon, so keep an eye out for that one. As I mentioned, uh, you can check out all of the benchmarks for this board here in our web review. The link for that will be in the description. Please let me know what you guys think of this new board here in the comments section. Would love to hear what you think. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you guys next time.